Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to do a sweet cell phone screen replacement for a sort of commercially vibe inside of After Effects and Mocha for AE. Now, if you've never used Mocha before, then you are in for a treat. So inside of After Effects, you see we've got our sweet looking footage here shot on the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 2.5K just in my dining room. And you see down here, we've got two separate clips. They are the same clip. I just have one as a JPEG sequence because that is a format that I've had good, good experiences with when using Mocha because Mocha can be a little picky sometimes. So JPEG sequence works fine, but then once you're done tracking, we'll go switch down to our Cineform sequence or Cineform clip just because that makes stuff a little bit easier. So when normal people track stuff in After Effects, they use this tracker panel and they go, you know, track motion and you know, they select all sorts of, of, of goobabs and doodahs and, you know, do point tracking. But if you're elite pro like me, and like you will be soon, and you see this clip, you say, oh, that is a planar track. You use Mocha for that. So what a planar track is, is instead of just finding little points of high contrast, like this corner or these little camera diddly boops, it looks at this whole plane and it can track that. So then you can stick an image right on top of it and it will be really great. So screen replacement, sign replacement, lots of invisible effects uses, even some digital makeup and stuff like that. It is just amazing for it. So to get into Mocha, we're gonna select the clip that we want to track, then go to animation, track with Mocha AE. And this will launch a separate program. And like I said, if you've never used it before, you're in for a treat. So you see, since we used a JPEG sequence, all this stuff is correct. Our frame rate is right. Pixel aspects, right? We're going to name this phone and hit OK. So now you can see we've got our timeline here, just normal stuff. You can drag around and we're looking good. So the first thing that we need to do to take care of this is you see my hand goes in front of the screen and that will throw off the track. So what we do is we make a little mask around your hand. So you can use normal Bezier splines if you want, but one fun thing, which is really great about Mocha is they have these things called X splines which basically just always stay connected, which are a lot of fun. So that's what we're gonna to use today because we're in Mocha. So just gonna, you see it stays connected, do a quick little mask around the hand, because why not? And then you right click to get out of that mode. So now see so you've got a little keyframe and we'll go ahead and try tracking, but you know, I doubt it'll be great. Oh, look at that. It's even tracking it a little bit. So I was all prepared to go ahead and keyframe this, but it looks like, you know, my hand is athletic enough that Mocha is okay with it. Oop, and there it got a little stuck. So, so since we have automatic keyframe insertion enabled, we're just gonna go ahead and move that and that because this mask doesn't need to be great because it's just a mask. And now hopefully we'll see, yep. So we should have added a keyframe right before that. Oh, well, you know, you live and you learn. You can tell that I haven't used Mocha for a while, but this is why I should have just you know, okay, there we go. Now we've got some good stuff. And now moving ahead, we'll just keyframe the whole thing. And I'll go ahead and speed up this section because no one needs to watch me masking all day. So there we go. We'll call that good enough for now. And I'll go ahead and disable processing on this so it won't try and track whenever we do our next little, little track here. So now we'll scoot forward to a place where we have a nice clean frame like that. Look at that, just gorgeous. It's almost like I know it's going to make a tutorial about this. And now to zoom, you hold down the Z key and you can click and drag, and to pan, you hold down the X key and you click and drag. So now I'll make another little X spline around here. Yes, oh look, it's like it was made for this or something. And we'll sort of refine it out. You can sharpen up these corners by pulling on these little blue handles. So that's looking good. And now a really cool thing is you can go ahead and define your corner pin. So bring this in here and you can see over in the upper left hand corner of the screen, you get a magnified view, which is super nice. So you can bring that right in the corner, pow, right in the corner, and boom. Then one more, nice. So now we'll go ahead and track forward and make sure this looks good. I'll also enable our grid just because that's fun to watch. So track forward, you see, we should probably go back and take another look at that end in just a bit. But I mean, if you look at our actual corner pin, it's sticking there pretty well. There's a little adjustment at the end we should probably make, but I might just take care of that in After Effects because this is a tutorial and we're just rushing through it. So now we'll go ahead and go backwards. And I want to make sure that this layer is on the bottom. So you can see this is our hand layer. I'll rename that to, and it will treat this just like a normal layer stack. So it sees that this hand is in the foreground. So it will use that to mask over our phone track. 
which is in the background. And we'll make this a, a crazy color like blue, cyan, whatever, teal. Now go ahead and make sure that our phone track is selected and track backwards. Oh, uh, shoot. You can see that I missed part of the stuff and you can see that I'd screwing up the track. So you saw at the place before when the hand was going over, the track was sticking just fine. But now, since I didn't realize there was another little part, it totally screwed everything up. So luckily that's easy to fix. We'll just go to a nice other point right here when it's about to go and select our hand and go ahead and move our mask back. And I'll go ahead and turn off our grid and our corner pin for this because we don't care about that for this particular mask. And there were some parts earlier that I probably should take another look at, but once again, this is just a tutorial and I'm not like actually delivering this footage to anyone. So, you know, this might just be 99% instead of my normal, you know, 100%. And you can also see that we've had like zero issues with this so far. So you know, I'm not saying anything for sure, but you know, sometimes it helps to have a cinematographer that like knows how visual effects work because then you don't have issues. So now we will swap back to our phone and re-enable these other fun little things. So if like a client's anywhere nearby, they'll say, wow, this guy knows what he is doing. So now we'll go ahead and continue tracking backwards. You see now it is just sticking like syrup and nice. All right, I'll go ahead and save this because I probably should have saved a little earlier. Now in order to get this information out of Mocha and into After Effects, we're gonna need to go to Export Tracking Data and we've got After Effects corner pin, supports motion blur, that is perfect. I'm just gonna copy this to the clipboard. And then inside of here, we're gonna create a new layer with Control Y, make sure it's comp size, hit OK, and then just hit Control V. And now you can see, go ahead and disable this guy. So it'll render a little faster. See, we've got something good happening. And now it'll be even more better whenever we F4, enable motion blur, enable motion blur. And look at that, that's looking pretty sweet so far, except for that little part at the end. So now in order to do our next little bit of making stuff look good, we're going to duplicate our Cineform layer with Control D, bring it to the top with Control Shift right bracket, then go to key light, because that is a nice and easy plugin. Drag that on top, key this phone out. Nice, Let's see if we get it in one go. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, don't even have to do any work. So I got that easy of a key on the phone. I used a, gosh, that little part at the end, we'll just cut that out, because I don't feel like fixing it. I got this green thing on the phone using an app called Green Screen, not sponsored, it's just you know, a free app. And I turned my brightness all the way down so I didn't get any sort of crazy light wrap stuff. So those two things together helped out a lot. So now we'll go ahead and put something on this guy. So I'll hit Control Shift C to pre-compose this and we'll call this screen. And then we will leave all the attributes in this comp which will make it much easier to work on in the other one. So in here, Screen, a uh, text layer. Oh, that is a beautiful font. It's pretty because that is exactly what that font and color looks like. And now we're probably gonna have to play around with some stuff. If we were smart, we would have made things the right aspect ratio, but you know. So now you can see that our text is sort of smushed in here. But I mean, other than that, it's looking pretty good. So what we can do is we can pre-compose this again, and we'll call this stretch, move all attributes in the new composition, and then we'll do some quick math. So we're gonna open up my favorite mathematical program, and on one hand we have 1920 by 1080, Shout out to the touch screen. Then on the other hand, we have 1440 by 2560, which is the resolution of my phone in portrait mode. 
There we go. So now we're going to just do our simple little cross multiplying that we learned in sixth grade. With calculator, 1920 times 25, 60 equals 4915200. And 1080 times 1440 equals 155520. Divide these two for nine one five two zero zero divided by one five 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 two zero. So we will take three hundred and sixteen and go down to our stretch, go to scale, uncheck this, and make this three sixteen. And look at that. Now it's better. So you learned some math today. Excellent. So in here we should probably make this comp. Control K. 1440 by oop, 2560. And Control Shift Y. Make comp size. Oop, and change this guy over here. We're getting that. And now now we're getting somewhere. Let's take this overall scale way down so it fits right where it goes. We won't be exact. Well, actually, we can right click, go to transform, fit the comp. And now we're right on the money. So now look at that. We're good to go. So if we wanted to do this and you know, duplicate it, and make this one say buy house LUTs and make it this color. And I mean, we basically have the sign for, for Theo's boutique house, house LUTs. I mean, if I had a physical store, this is the sign that would be on there. You get stretched out and now look at this. Look at this. Look at how pro this looks. Man, I mean, I basically just got like a million dollars in the mail from that. Let's go ahead and make sure that all of these have motion blur turned in on all the way down, you know, just in case. Yeah, I mean, I think we were looking pretty good there. That is a sellable shot if ever I did see one. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to give it a like, if you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meester Media YouTube channel. I'm trying to do more longer form stuff like this because one, it is valuable, and two, that is the way the algorithm wants me to make videos now. So, you know, get ready for some more epics, which will probably entail more After Effects and stuff. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends because I know that I've had a lot of people asking me how to do this. One of you knows who you are specifically because I'm filming this like 10 minutes after you called me on the phone and suggested that I make this tutorial. So, what's up, man? Also, be sure to check out my Patreon campaign where you can get extra little bonus things along with these tutorials, like project files or you know, extra LUTs and power grades and stuff I don't feel like making into a product. It's a pretty sweet little thing. And if you don't want to do that, fine. The videos are still free. Also, be sure to check out meesnewmedia.com slash products. We have all sorts of cool stuff to make your stuff look better, faster, easier, etc. So, once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. We have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.